Hello and welcome to another tutorial from FM Tutorials. My name is David and today I want to give you a quick lesson on an alternative method of demonstrating required fields in a database. Now one method of ensuring that your users enter the data in your table or database as required is by entering the manage database dialog and individually setting the validation for each particular record. Uh, for example here, validate this field and we can select things such as not empty, etc. And this is all very fine, but you might have an instance where this will not work for you um, or you have a particular layout where that field is not a uh, part of that layout and so you're going to have problems trying to get the user to commit the record because a field will require a value. So here's a quick way to demonstrate uh, how you can get the same effect using scripts and specific layouts and also so that you can control and demonstrate which fields need to be shown on a layout. So this is what we're going to be making. I have a student table and I have the first name, last name, date of birth, and account number but we really only require the first, last name, and the account number fields and the date of birth we might not know it. So that field is not going to be required and so this is the uh, end result of what we're going to create. When we click new record we have our dialog here and we enter the student name okay and we enter a date of birth but let's say we try to continue without entering the account ID and I get a warning that I have to fill in all mandatory fields and then our database highlights which fields those are so that the user can more easily get the information and therefore enter the required data at which point it will now allow him to save the record and commit it. Okay so let's go ahead and set this up. Now if you have watched my earlier tutorials I've already gone over how to add fields to a database table as well as how to create layouts so I'm going to go ahead and let you do that on your own and what we're going to see today is the actual script and the conditional formatting that we use to produce this result. So the first thing is we have a button set up here and it performs a script called create new student so let's go ahead and open up the script workspace and view this script and I'll go over it very quickly here which is uh, the first thing is to create a new window and we hide the toolbars and then we go to the dialog layout that we created for entering a new student and we adjust the window so that it resizes everything to fit on our screen and then we position the dialog and then we create a new record and this is where we create a loop and the purpose of the loop is to uh, force the user to enter the fields and if there is a missing piece of information in a field then the script is going to pop up the alert the dialogue in other words to warn the person to highlight those fields and then loop again and pause the script at that point. So the check will occur over and over and the loop will be exited when all required fields have been filled in. At which point we clear the variables that we created for conditional formatting which is step 17 and then we close the dialog window. Okay so I'm going to add a, um, a link to my blog where you can get the database file for this project and you can analyze it but very quickly I'll just show you if I go to layout mode and I go to our students uh, dialogue layout I have these three fields which have conditional formatting so what you do is you just click shift and you select those three fields and right click them and we go to conditional formatting and I have created one condition and we select formula is and we click specify and we're specifying that this condition will come into effect if a global variable called highlight is set to one. For those of you who don't know 
what a variable is or a global variable is basically a way of storing information without having to enter it into a field. If you use one dollar sign, that variable will be available for the duration of the current script. Okay? If you use two dollar signs, that's called a global variable and you can use that between scripts. So for example, if you create a new record and you set a global variable and then that script completes and you start another script possibly by clicking on another button on the layout, that variable will still be available and you can use it across the file in different places. So we set a global variable earlier in our script and here we're telling it that if that global variable exists and it's set to one, then this condition will be put into effect, which is that the fill color of the field will be this pink color. Okay, so we click OK. And now we go back to browse mode. And of course, you're not going to see anything right now. And this particular button here is basically just a single script step, which is to resume the current script. Okay, so let's go back to our student list. And in our script, which we will analyze a little bit more closely, we enter the loop here. So at this point, the first step in the loop is to pause the script. So once the dialogue appears, we'll freeze the script at that point. Okay, the user enters his information and then he clicks the continue button in that dialogue. And the first step is to commit the records. And then the loop, the loop will be exited if the student first name is not empty and the last name is not empty and the account ID is not empty. So at that point, it, if those conditions were met, it would exit and go to step 17. In this case, we put a check and if statement which is if the student first name or last name or account ID is empty, then we're going to show a custom dialog, which is error, please enter all mandatory fields. And this is where we set the variable, highlight. And we set a value of one, okay? And then we use refresh window, which will allow the conditional formatting to show itself and then the script loops again and pauses. And it'll just keep doing that over and over until this condition is met. It's very important when you create a loop to uh, have a way of getting out of that loop. Okay, there's various ways to do that, but in this case we're using the exit loop if script step. And then after we click the continue and all the conditions have been met, we clear this variable and you simply do that by using double quotations, which indicates an empty string and then we close the window. Okay, so let's take a look one more time. I click new and we go ahead and fill in the student's name. Okay, and we enter the date of birth, but we miss the account ID and we try to click continue and we get the warning to enter all mandatory fields. And now we have our fields highlighted so we go ahead and locate the account ID and we enter that information. And now when we press continue, the loop for the second time will validate and it will complete the script. Uh, this is very useful if you don't want to use validation within FileMaker Pro. Of course, you are going to have scenarios where you need to, to validate your data. And this just requires a little bit more extra work if you are also going to validate the contents of the field as opposed to whether it is just empty or not. But this is much more user friendly and you have greater control in developing your database. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Please send me a message if you would like me to cover a particular topic and thank you for watching. I will have more tutorials very shortly for you. See you next time.